Apparently, in the face of the country's messy economic condition, dangerously looming recession, folks not being able to comfortably afford food, people sleeping in the streets, and tents popping up everywhere, it appears the people of Calgary would be in for a rougher ride going into the winter under a woke left-wing mayor like Jyoti Gondek, who evidently seems so out of touch with the reality of what average Canadian households are facing at the moment. You know how these guys think that if enough debt is accumulated, then the budget just finds a way to balance itself like some magic happened. It's just really funny, and worse still, is that this is done while vilifying the oil and gas sector in the country, frustrating the European neighbors who are ready to pay enormously for the country's oil, raising taxes on carbon emissions to make gas prices soar high to the sky and endlessly channeling the accumulated debts on inexplicable and apparently unsustainable woke green policies like EVs. But then, before getting on to what today's story is specifically about, please take a moment to support the channel by hitting the subscribe button below. Also, please leave a like and share this video and our other videos with as many people as possible. That said, let's quickly continue. So, in a rather funny manner, it would be interesting to know that in order to finance the acquisition of 259 zero-emission electric buses, the city of Calgary would apparently be obtaining a loan of $168 million from the Canada Infrastructure Bank. A report presented on October 18 to Calgary's Executive Committee by Corporate Planning and Financial Services recommended that the city give the first reading to Bylaw 8B2022. Apparently, this would authorize the city to incur indebtedness with the Canada Infrastructure Bank for a non-revolving, amortizing term credit facility to purchase the vehicles. In the same vein, according to the report, the city will be required to also execute final agreements with the Canada Infrastructure Bank before the proposed legislation that permits it to incur the debts of up to $168 million may become effective. Apparently, the pertinent reason why the CIB would be offering the city a flexible source of long-term financing at interest rates that are below market rates is in order to allow investments in transportation and infrastructure to primarily assist the city in accomplishing its climate objectives. The initiative would seek financing with a potential of $223 million in grants and an additional $168 million via the CIB. The report also indicates that the initiative would supposedly provide individuals the ability to enjoy cleaner commutes, which would enhance Calgarians' overall quality of life. And in addition, it states that the city being given a flexible source of long-term financing at a considerably below market interest rate as a result of the loan in the amount of $168 million would also help foster fiscal discipline. The report further advises the members of the Municipal Council to respond fast in order to acquire a more desired interest rate. Meanwhile, the Conservatives have referred to the CIB as a corporate handout program run by the Liberal government, highlighting the fact that its $35 billion fund has not finished a single project since it was established in 2017. Pat Kelly, a member of the Conservative Party of Canada, speaking in the House of Commons earlier this month, states that the organization has to get serious about economic growth, resulting from real people building real things that supply real services to real consumers, not the crony capitalism that has crept into the government in everything from its infrastructure bank to its supercluster system and corporate giveaways. Similarly, Alberta Director for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, Chris Sims, said that the city of Calgary and its taxpayers do not have the funds necessary to implement the expensive idea. There is only one taxpayer, be it municipal, provincial, or federal. We are in debt, and we can't be throwing money around like crazy. The city needs to separate wants from needs, just like hardworking families have to do to live within their means, Sims remarked. Although the plan is not in its final form at the moment, before signing a permanent agreement with the CIB, the executive committee would first assess the ramifications by going through a technical and financial report if the city decides to go ahead with a proposal. You know, it appears uninformed fiscal plans that are aimed at scoring cheap political points and, in reality, that would lead to more debt accumulation in the long run and the unbelievable proliferation of the taxpayers' funds is the major problem of the woke lefties in Canada. Arguably, Calgary is very cold and because of that, it's only logical to understand it is not reliable for electric vehicles. Aside from that, there's the problem of charging stations with their extremely expensive maintenance costs. But you can bet the leftoids didn't consider that either before deciding to jump into the money pit. Meanwhile, there's the reality that Calgary's electric utility, NMAX, apparently generates 86% of its power from natural gas, which of course would mean that running electric buses in Calgary burns more gas and creates more carbon dioxide than the natural gas burning buses the city already have. You know, the clownery and hypocrisy is just really astonishing. And of course, the whole leftist woke, frustrating green agenda is even worse at the federal level. 
in a really grim manner, rather than Justin Trudeau listening to the voice of the majority of the citizens by unveiling a huge package of tax cuts alongside energy price caps for Canadian households and businesses, this guy would instead sacrifice the oil and gas industry, the country's economic stability and the affordability capacity of the Canadian populace for narcissistic and inexplicable woke green policies, while doubling down on his frustrating tax and overspend attitude which only continues to fuel the cost of living crisis in the country. And yet again, a recent clip features Conservative Parliament member Leslin Liu is calling out Justin Trudeau to stop punishing Canadians and cancel his plans to triple taxes on gas, groceries, and home heating, all in the name of furthering his climate change agenda. Watch this. The current cost of living crisis is caused by this government's reckless and irresponsible spending. Canadians cannot afford basic necessities anymore. I recently received emails from people from all over the country telling me that for the first time ever they could not afford to buy a turkey and even some food items for Thanksgiving dinner. Canadians are suffering, Mr. Speaker. Will this Prime Minister show some compassion on Canadians that are struggling and cancel his plans to triple, triple, triple taxes on gas, home heating, and groceries. Arguably, Canada has established itself as a frontrunner in the global fight against climate change under the Trudeau Liberals by enacting a number of increasingly ambitious environmental policies and objectives. But of course, the emissions of greenhouse gases that come from Canada tell a completely different narrative. While these guys triple the cost for carbon footprints, they continue to jet around the world on the Canadian dime. Meanwhile, since Trudeau assumed office, all of Canada's other peers in the G7 have been able to accomplish economic development while simultaneously lowering emissions. But for Canada, despite the fact that the Trudeau Liberals have sacrificed the proliferation of the country's economy all in the name of going completely green, when it comes to emissions produced per person, the country still ranks second only to Saudi Arabia in the G20. It's just really insane. And I really think as Vancouver has just rid itself of its woke clowns, Calgary definitely needs to do the same, and of course, the entire Canadian populace at large before the country gets too broke. And that's it viewers. Please let's know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also please share our videos with as many people as possible. In the same vein, we created a telegram group where we can discuss affairs that concern our country without fear of being censored for our comments. The link to the group is in the description. And keep in mind that we are always determined to boldly expose the hypocrisy of the left wing and mainstream media while keeping you updated and conscious. You should also consider turning on your post notifications so you will be the first to know when a new video is released. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.